What's up guys, Speed here, and today we are here with 7.23, the Outlanders update, and I'm very excited, but this video will be a little bit different, so you're used to seeing these like 2, 3, 4, even 5 hour patch note videos from people like Purge, and I'm going to be doing something different, I'm going to be giving you the spark notes of the patch, only the important stuff in a very simplified version, so you can understand all the changes without having to read it for an hour and a half, like I just did. But let's get right into it to waste no time, first off, two new heroes, Void Spirit and Spitfire. Next up for Courier, everyone basically gets their own Courier, that's essentially all you need to know, right? In fact, what's even more important is that Couriers can actually use items, you can ward in the mid game at very certain at level of the Courier, you can ward with Couriers, but the most important thing, everyone gets their own Courier. In terms of economy, Observer Wards no longer cost gold, and heroes, all of them, now start with 3 Town Portal Scrolls, big buff to supports and their ability to just keep you know, gold coming in. There's obviously a new map. I'm not going to cover this in this video. Might be a whole new one, but just check it out for yourself that you'll just have to get used to. Very big change here. All heroes can now level up to level 30. And what's important to understand, when you hit level 30, you get both sides of the talent tree, meaning that you get the left and the right side. There's no new talents. You just get both. You get all eight of the talents. So there's a small spell immunity change, basically making it where if your ability pierces spell immunity, it does damage. So something like Clockwork Hook, while it might have stunned them through spell immunity, it didn't actually deal the damage, now it does. This applies to Fiend's Grip, this applies to uh, Spirit Breaker ulti, any ability like that that has spell immunity. They removed side shops. That's all you have to know. <laughs> Just as like a small thing um, that I think is important. They made multi-shot targets on towers when you glyph from 2 to 4, so it's really hard to push towers if they glyph. Uh, you basically have to glyph to counter glyph, and in addition to that, what I wanted to say is that if you deny a tower, now instead of it just being 0 gold to everyone, one team gets 50% and the other team also gets 50%. So your team gets 50% and the other team gets 50%. It's not just 0 for everyone. There's a ton of neutral changes to just creeps. I'm not going to read them all out for this video. It's basically just a lot of nerfs. The only main buff that I noticed was that the the lady creep, the, the snow lady of the small camp got five percent moose low basically the rest of them were for the most part nerfs not completely but uh hero like chen not as good is what i'd say because they they got rid of the neutral cloak aura where chen could just give his team like 30 percent buff they added in outposts and to explain them to the best capability that i can because frankly guys i am somewhat as confused as you are i've really done a lot of reading and a lot of talking to to understand these things but basically what i'm understanding is that there's two of these on the map and they are where the side shops are it's pretty easy to understand where the side shops are and then when you right click on it you basically sit there and you channel it and then when this happens you get xp right also you can tp to it so basically what it allows you to do is to tp to side lanes very effectively it kind of opens up the map what's important to also understand about it is that you can only do this at the 10 minute mark right so when the game hits 10 minutes you can start taking these over and it's important if you're a support to use these right because then you get a lot of xp and it also enables your team to tp around the map so it's actually a fairly big deal it does take quite a while to tp to them but hopefully you kind of understand what they actually do so to talk about neutral items, basically what Valve did is they added new items that spawn when you kill a neutral camp. And I'm not going to be reading all the items. It's something that could just be an entire video in itself. Essentially what you need to know is that when you kill a neutral camp, you have a chance to get an item. It's around a 10% chance basically for all the tiers. There's different tier items, right? And essentially what this means is that when you're jungling, you can get these items that you can share, right? So you actually, as a core, you can share items, right? You can give... Uh, whatever item that dropped to a support like for instance one of the items that drops is called the keen optic it gives 75 cast range and mana regen which is actually decent for a lot of cores however it could be good on, on a support let's say you're an elk this isn't necessarily that great i, I guess the mana regen is good but <laughs> uh, for the most part what you want to understand is that you have a chance to get items and then when these items drop you can give them to your teammates Oh, and important, I almost forgot this, you now have four backpack slots instead of three, so pretty nice quality of life change. So let's get into item changes. Um, the first important one to note is that Stout Shield does not exist. Instead, melee heroes now have a passive eight damage block. Uh, that's just it. In terms of items, there's really nothing crazy that you have to know. Quelling Blade was reduced by 50 gold, but is a bit worse. Orb of Venom got nerfed. A lot of the stat items got overall nerfed in general. But the most important change, as you guys know, I love mangoes. And now you can have three mangoes in one slot, which is very, very hype. Uh, very cool. So getting into some of the more important or confusing item changes, basically what you need to know about Buckler and, and 
Bassy and Headdress is that they kind of just switched up what all these items give. They're basically kind of the same item, just with different overall uh, stats and changes. So Buckler requires a Ring of Protection. That's the cheap armor item. A branch and a recipe and gives stats and armor, but does not have an active. Bassy requires a Sage's Mask, an Iron Branch, and a recipe, but gives three all stats, which is actually a lot, and mana regen. Doesn't seem like it gives any AoE to anyone, as far as I'm concerned. And Headdress now requires a Ring of Regen, an Iron Branch, and a recipe. So all these items have recipes now, but it also gives three stats and, and an HP regen aura. So overall, kind of weird. It's like more so auras. Uh, in terms of what they give, right? It's just armor, mana, and HP aura, and then three all stats. So they're kind of just like stat items with, with auras, depending on what you think is good for the game. So to talk about the new Vlads, Vlads is... It's a bit bizarre. It's more expensive by around 200 gold, and it gives you six all stats, which is fairly significant, a 25% lifesteal aura, which is not specified to melee or ranged heroes, making me think it is both, 1.5 mana regen, and three armor, which is fairly significant. The buildup is a bit weird, though. Just to understand it, it requires a Bassy, a Morbid Mask, a Buckler, which is uh, the most interesting one to me, a Buckler, and a Recipe. So, pretty good buildup, right? Bassy have and Buckler, both two solid items to have early on, so decent buildup. Helm of the Dominator got a pretty big change. Basically, now it requires a headdress, a broadsword, which is the damage item that costs 1,200 gold, a crown, and a recipe. Also, really good for the landing stage, right? You could have a crown and a headdress. Good build up. It is a lot more expensive, around 200 gold as well. But the thing is, it's kind of like the old Helm Dom when every hero was buying it, even cores which means that it gives 7 all stats, 20 base damage aura, and 5 HP regen, which makes me think cores are going to buy this again, like Jugs, uh, TB, Sven, because it gives you stats, it gives you base damage in an aura, which is pretty significant, and it gives you HP regen to sustain your farming, so overall, I, I like that a lot. Moving out to drums, nothing too crazy, uh, really didn't change too much. Overall, the item, it seems like it still has the active, is more expensive, but it has extremely good buildup. Again, like all these items, just really nice buildup. Gloves of Haste is part of it, Wind Lace, Crown, and then a massive recipe. The thing is, though, having those three items for the laning stage, super, super nice, right? The thing is, the recipe is very expensive, but like the fact that you can just buy those three items and eventually upgrade them is very convenient, in my opinion. Gives six all stats, which is good as always, 20 movement speed, and then a 20 attack speed aura, so pretty good. So Abyssal Blade, and I know I'm skipping over a lot of the items, guys. They didn't get changed that significantly, to be honest. Uh, nothing I would freak out over or that's going to, like, change a game to a large extent. One that will, though, is Abyssal Blade it has a blink strike. So you can actually blink towards people when you have Abyssal Blade in a 600 cast range, meaning you can blink and then Abyssal them, right? Which is good. It, it makes heroes that have a mobility problem, like someone like Wraith King or Sven, be able to buy Abyssal Blade and then, you know, just, like, bash someone from 600 range, which is pretty good. Bloodstorm got like a storm buff is what I'll call it. Basically, it combines from a Kaya and a soul booster, which is really convenient for storm because now storm can buy the Kaya and basically just get the soul booster. And the thing is the bloodstone actually keeps the base bonuses from both, uh, right? Plus 200% mana regen, which is very, very significant. So I think in general, pretty nice storm buff is, is how I would look at this. You can go bloodstone into orchid and it seems really good to me. For some reason, for Sanj, and they, they gave it, like, self-HP regen. I don't even know why they would do this. It seems bad, to be honest, so wouldn't worry about it too much. Just know that Sanj doesn't give damage. It gives self-HP regen and has been buffed in terms of status resistance. Holy Luck, it got a really weird change. It doesn't provide regeneration amplification. However, the heal amplification it gives is now up by 10% to 35%. Uh, the health was increased from 200 to 250, and it now requires a magic wand instead of a cloak, meaning it's obviously better build up for supports or even just any, you know, sort of hero that wants to go he the healing route because it provides the magic wand benefits. So in general, I don't think Holy Luck will still be purchased much, to be honest. Still think the hero lacks the ability to like either provide a slow control like really pr proper defensive capabilities doesn't give a purge disengage so I i'm not too convinced it's good gloves of haste it's cost was reduced from 500 400 pretty significant good to buy from the side shop now kappa there's no side shop attack speed was increased from 20 to 25 on treads midas was nerfed by 100 armlet was actually nerfed by 100 which is a bit weird but it's the same cost because the gloves of haste was buffed mask of madness got a pretty big buff in my opinion the duration was reduced by two seconds but i think it's good in team fights because it allows you to you know kill the person you want to in the six seconds but not s stay silenced for forever and the cooldown was reduced which you know means it's overall better for farming more uptime you only have to buy one dust at a time now it only makes you buy one dust 
Seems like sentry wards were nerfed again. The duration increased from 6 to 8 minutes, so they stay on the map for longer. But the stock replenish cooldown was increased from 85 to 95, so even less sentry wards on the map. You know, they stay up for longer, but if they get dewarded, you know, that, that's all you're getting. Battle Fury got a 9 damage buff, Silver Edge got a 6 damage buff, and Echo Saber got a 3 damage buff. Nothing too significant, I think the main one is Battle Fury, it's quite a better item with 9 more damage. Don't think it's going to be purchased that much over Maelstrom still, but guess we'll have to see. Glimmer Cape baby, best item of the game, can now be used on careers and units, meaning you can save things like Necro Books, a, a Centaur, or a Aquario or so. Very cool. Now getting into the hero changes, I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible. To be honest, some of them even still confuse me, guys. I'm not going to lie. You'll get to understand them as you play the heroes more and more, but I'm really going to try to give you the most simple lowdown possible. First off, understanding Abaddon, his miscoil cannot deny anymore. They got rid of denies essentially. Pudge can't deny either, which we'll get into later on, but denying was a weird mechanic that kind of it was just meh so they got rid of the nice and curse of vern is slow when you proc it is reduced from 30 to 15 at level one and, and it's a little bit worse at all levels but overall you can still max this and play him as offlane and i think abaddon is still a very strong offlaner right now so as i said just to make it clear guys i'm not going to go over every hero i'm going to go over the only ones that i think are important or actually make the hero significantly worse or better because if i go over every one the video will take forever and frankly i think a lot of these changes don't change the hero much at all someone like any mage who has a lot of changes I'm not going to read it over. If you really think it matters, sure, you can tell me in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to discuss it with you, but for the most part, don't think so. Getting into Arc Warden, I think Arc Warden is becoming a potentially very dangerous hero. His 25 talent did get nerfed, so the 350 spark rate damage is now down to 300, which was actually one of the better talents in the game, even though you might have not have thought that it, it was. But his Tempest double duration was increased from 1620 to 24 to 1822 to 26. So two at all levels, which is a lot. It, it might not sound like a lot, but it is definitely a lot. Bane got a weird rework where Enfeeble is essentially a passive. Whenever you use a spell, it reduces the enemy's magic resistance and status resistance. So it's kind of like old Enfeeble to some extent, but I don't think it's good because like you're not going to have that many levels on Bane. So I wouldn't worry too much about Bane. Essentially, they made Brain Sap also from pure to magical, but it's a higher number. The thing is, in general, I don't think Bane is better. I think Bane is almost worse. Batrider got a ton of changes to really simplify it. Essentially, what you need to know, what are the important ones? Firefly does not give flying vision, but the movement speed is increased, so you move faster. And Firefly now gives 800 day-night vision when maxed out, which is broken. It's honestly, I'm afraid this hero that is potentially broken. 800 day-night vision, you can see legitimately everything. And not only that, Sticky Napalm no longer has a cast point, and it no longer requires turning the cast. Meaning if someone's chasing you, you don't have to turn around to Sticky Napalm them, so it's almost impossible to catch Batrider because it still slows, you have more movement speed, he can see everyone. It's just insane. They changed Flame Break a bunch, uh, wouldn't worry about it too much though. So they changed Brewmaster a bunch, uh, kind of just making the, the Cinder Brew a bit better is what I'd say. Essentially, now the duration does not refresh. It gets extended by three when you proc it. Essentially, how Cinder Brew worked in the past was if someone was Cinder Brewed and you used a spell on them, it would just reset the cooldown. But now it amps it by three. Kind of like Silencer's Q is how I would look at it. They got rid of the self-attack, so you can't hit yourself when you're, you're Cinder Brewed. And it ignites on any spell damage rather than only ones that were above 80 damage so it's kind of like just better for the laning stage in my opinion it's a bit hard to understand i guess we'll figure out in the future but in general i think it's like one of those spells where you know the, the cooldown got reduced uh, the slow got buffed it's like if you get it maxed out which it seems like they're trying to incentivize in my opinion like max out cinder brew is what, what they're trying to tell us then it's better Centaur war runner which is a hero that i thought was pretty good already got a retaliate return damage increase so your retaliate now does more damage when people hit you or when towers hit you. Chaos Knight got a massive amount of nerfs. Essentially what you need to know is that this hero is a much worse core. It has a new scepter where essentially when you cast Phantasm, all of the heroes around you, all of your allies get one illusion. But in general, I think this hero got absolutely destroyed. So I wouldn't play him as much as a core now. I think the hero is a significantly worse core, a decent support still. But that's what you need to know. Chen got his units nerfed. I still think Chen is one of the best heroes in Dota, frankly. I'm convinced Chen is still extremely good, but essentially his units are a bit worse. 1,000 to 700 HP at level 1, however, it still scales up. And the mana was nerfed, which is actually pretty significant because Chen could have some mana problems if you didn't sustain it too well. Considering also Hand of God, its mana was nerfed as well. In addition, Chen lost his XP gain talent, which definitely matters. You'll probably be taking cast range now. Maybe health if you're just trying to tank up. Kling's got some really weird changes. What you need to know is that his skeleton walk now gives attack speed. So when you 
are invisible and you come out of invisibility, you actually get attack speed. You no longer have strafe, which is basically why they gave the attack speed to Skeleton Walk. You now have Death Pact, which consumes any unit. You can't just eat a big creep though, because it has a level max. So you have to eat like lane creeps or just like lower level neutrals. It gives you 200 health up to 500. It makes your attacks have an armor debuff, meaning you do quite a bit more damage. And if a hero dies while under your debuff, you actually gain permanent damage and your cooldown is refreshed, meaning you can eat another creep. Kind of weird. I don't fully understand why they did this, but... Uh, hopefully you get it. Also now burning arming deals damage based on your attack damage, not base damage. Basically meaning that you don't have to buy items to make your ultimate good anymore like you did in the past. You can buy Deso and it fully works on your, your skeletons. <laughs> so Clockwork got a really weird scepter rework, which is essentially all you need to understand. He did get a hookshot cooldown buff, which is good for him. But essentially what a scepter is, is that when you use this ability called overclocking, which is what you get, an ability called overclocking, it refreshes all of your abilities, meaning you can have two of your Qs going, if I'm not mistaken. You get 40% movement speed buff, meaning you're just going crazy, and you get 200 attack speed for eight seconds. <laughs> but the thing is, when the duration expires, you get stunned for four seconds. Really, really bizarre. Don't know how I feel about this. I think it has potential for like late game clock uh, when you get a bunch of damage items. Sounds pretty good, but for the most part, don't think it's that viable. Crystal Maiden's abilities got changed. She now has one base mana regen. However, her arcane aura self mana regen now just doubles on herself. So you don't get like 8.5 at max, you now get five. Because essentially how CM scaling work, just to really show you and make it understandable is you have one base regen, so that's a buff in general. However, you don't just get this random number, right? Essentially, if you have 2.5 mana regen to the team, you get five. Also, you get magic resistance, which is significant. You now get 10 magic resistance, which is pretty crazy. Darkseer got a massive buff in my opinion, which is basically means that his vacuum now works on invulnerable or sleeping targets, meaning you can vacuum people who are Naga slept, which is insane. That used to be a thing in like really old TIs. I believe TI2 is what I was told. And that's just crazy because you can just vacuum everyone together during Naga ulti and you can disrupt their ulti them. You can uh, ice path them, any of these things. It's insane. Dark Willow's Bedlam got a big damage buff, 15 more damage per tick. It's just really insane. The Dazzle Scepter was changed. Basically, it makes Shadow Wave have more bounces and the bounce range is increased by 200 and it also dispels. So essentially, if your team gets global silence, if you have Greaves, you can purge the silence on yourself and then Shadow Wave your entire team to purge everyone. Fairly significant. I think it definitely has a lot more viable than the other Ag which was just AoE Shallow Grave. Doom got a bunch of changes. They're really, really weird. Essentially, Devour is a little bit better in terms of what creep you can eat early on, right? You can now eat a level four creep, a level one. However, the Devour cooldown was nerfed. So now it's 70 at all levels. The amount of gold you get is scaled up to 200 when you max it out. So like, it's kind of incentivized to max it out because you get 200 gold. However, it's a 70 second cooldown, meaning it's not that much better because it was 100 anyway, uh, with basically half the cooldown. So I, I don't really think Devour is better. I think it actually got nerfed essentially. However, Scorched Earth is what got buffed, is what I'll say, right? You're essentially, I think what they were trying to tell you to do from this patch is max your Scorched Earth and your Infernal Blade and just leave Devour level 1. That's the vibe I got at least. Maybe you take level 2 Devour because it allows you to take certain creeps that are actually pretty strong. Uh, but for the most part, they buff the numbers on Scorched Earth, meaning you should probably be maxing Scorched Earth if you're playing Doom. <laughs> Alright, really funny Dragonite change. Just want to put this in. If you buy Scepter on Dragonite, you can now fly over cliffs. Very cool. Drow got a ton of changes. What you need to know is that Frost Arrows now give you a certain amount of damage every time you attack. It scales up from the level. And what you also need to know, which is very important, is that her Precision Aura, her passive that gave attack speed to everyone, is now an ability called Multi-Shot that allows you to channel and it just fires a bunch of arrows in an area and essentially does a percentage of damage of your base damage and applies Frost Arrows. So it is fairly significant. The, it travels very far, it's good for clearing waves, but I don't think this necessarily makes Drow better because I think her, the Precision Aura was one of the reasons she was basically picked, or almost the only reason. In addition, Marksmanship no longer instantly kills creeps, however it does give you more proc damage. It's really bizarre, I think Drow is worse in my opinion, but I guess we'll have to see. Earthshaker, you can cancel his totem, so if, you know, they're doing Morphling Shaker and you see them hopping around, if they get rooted or stunned, you can cancel it, which is pretty significant. Enchantress got some really weird changes. Basically, Impetus is now a basic ability, is not your ultimate anymore, and I think you will be maxing it out, if I am not mistaken. It's a bit weird, because it no longer pierces spell immunity, however... It does 8, 12, 16, 20% of your damage. It goes up in mana, but it goes all the way down to a zero second cooldown, meaning you can chunk people, right? You can deal a, an insane amount of damage. Uh, Enchant was changed where it is now 20 at all levels. The creep duration is a lot longer, but you only can control one creep 
And when you do enchant a creep, it actually upgrades the creep with a significantly larger amount of HP, right? Depending on the level, it gives it a lot more damage, right? From 10, 30, 50 to 70, and it fully heals it. But the weird, most weird thing about enchanters is that an untouchable, your ability that allows you to slow attack speed is now your ultimate. And it reduces attack speed from 100, 140 to 180, and it pierces spell immunity. So essentially, I think if you get a lot of levels on Enchantress, you're a better hero is the vibe I'm getting. Also, I think Enchantress is a pretty good mid laner, which will be part of another video. Void got a bunch of nerfs. Essentially, it's just overall number nerfs. Time Locks, Thunderation was nerfed. Chrono cooldown was nerfed. Level 10 talent nerfed. Level 20 talent nerfed. So essentially what they also did is they changed time dilation where it slows the progression rate. It doesn't just like add a specific number of how long it takes to get the cooldown off again it's like 75 percent now it also still slows so it's essentially the same ability don't worry about it too much what's surprising to me is that gyro did not get nerfed really that's one thing i would look at gyro barely nerfed still very good hero huskar got a weird change burning spears now is four percent of your current health instead of a fixed 15 which is bizarre to me i feel like it's worse later on because you're gonna lose a ton of hp not sure how i feel about that we need to know about the scepter upgrade for Huskar is that it actually got nerfed because apparently it was extremely good like broken is what I heard even though people weren't really buying it and you couldn't see it apparently it was basically broken but now it just taunts enemies for 2.5 seconds when you life break them which is fairly significant but don't know if it's good enough so for all you invoker players I think this is a buff in my opinion in fact I think it's a huge buff essentially what you need to know about invoke is you cannot buy ags to reduce the cooldown now essentially how it works is that every time you put a point in, in, in an orb right whether it's exhort quas or wex does not matter you get your invoke cooldown reduced by 0.3, right? However, invoke base cooldown was nerfed from 6 to 7. So essentially, every level you go up, you get 0.3 cooldown less on your ultimate. In addition, Scepter, if you buy it, it just adds Cataclysm to Sunstrike. And what I'm kind of understanding by that, if I had to guess, because I have not looked into everything yet, but I think Cataclysm is now a lower cooldown unless they did not change it. I guess we'll have to see. IO got some ability reworks to understand certain things. Tether slows enemies by a certain percentage based on the levels, which is fairly significant. Overcharge cooldown got reduced, so it's buffed by two seconds. And Overcharge now provides max HP regen instead of damage reduction. So it just gives you a lot more HP regen. Still provides the same attack speed, uh, which is pretty good. Coddle didn't get really any insane changes. Blinding Light mana cost was obviously nerfed. The cast range was also nerfed. And the Will-O-Wisp cast range was also nerfed. But I th still think the hero is potentially broken. I wouldn't give up on picking Coddle. I think Coddle is still one of the best supports in the game. A lot of number nerfs, but nothing significant enough, in my opinion, to actually make the hero unplayable even close. Kunga got a lot of nerfs as well. The cooldown was increased by 4 seconds, which is massive. Now it's 10 to 14, meaning you're going to be able to keep people in place a lot less. It doesn't go as well with Torrent either, so in general, this needed to happen though. Ghost Ship cooldown was also nerfed from 60 to 80. It does scale down, but not that significantly. And the run percentage now is 40% of all of those, which is still a lot. I still think Kunka is a good hero, frankly. I would not just dismiss Kunka as a hero. I still think people are going to pick Kunka, frankly. Um, but definitely just the worst version of his old self. Funny enough to me, Legion or Leshrac did not get nerfed, just keep that in mind. I think Lich is potentially a broken hero right now, or just maybe not broken, just very, very strong. Sinister Gaze now drains mana back to you, which is, it's okay. I wouldn't say it matters too much, but it's significant because it drains mana. It could counter certain heroes that have mana issues. And Chain Frost damage is increased by 15, 20, or 25 per bounce. So every time it bounces, it gains damage, which actually matters a lot because, you know, it bounces a lot. In addition, your 25 talent is pretty significant because essentially you can now get unlimited chain frost bounces, which I don't know if it's that good because sometimes people could split it at that point in the game because people have a lot of mobility in the late game. However, it could be funny to see just some infinite chain frost wobble combo. <laughs> Lifestealer got a lot of changes to explain it as simply as I can. Really as simply as I can. Rage no longer gives attack speed. However, it gives 15% movement speed. Open Wounds lifesteal was reduced, so you get less lifesteal when casting either spells or right clicks with the lifesteal from Open Wounds. But what's important to note is that Feast now pr passively provides 15, 30, 45, 60 attack speed. So you're going to be definitely maxing Feast from what I understand. 100% maxing Feast. It's really, really strong to max because it gives you a lot of attack speed. However, it no longer deals damage based on the target's max health, but it does provide 1.5 to 2.5, 3% lifesteal based on a target's max health. So it does still heal you. Kind of bizarre. Essentially, just lifestealers more so like some DPS here in my opinion, because they also gave him attack speed because even his base attack speed was buffed from 100 to 140. So really bizarre. Lifestealer does like less 
damage, but it has significantly more attack speed. I'm not even going to read Lone Druid, guys. If you want to know about Lone Druid and you're a Lone Druid player, read it for yourself. I'm not reading Lone Druid. I refuse. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just not doing it. Just not, I'm just not doing it. Luna got a bunch of uh, damage buffs. Howl got reworked. Essentially, in an AoE, it reduces armor and makes people deal less base attack damage, which is decent. Howl is also casted around your wolves. Uh, and for your scepter, you have a new scepter. Essentially, you can use your ultimate on an ally, which is cool for the late game. Magnus got a few big changes, and power is essentially a much worse ability. However, it is double on yourself, so Magnus as a core is a bit better for himself, but it's worse for buffing allies by a pretty significant margin. Mars got some big buffs. Essentially, now your rebuke, which is your crit, gets a 40% slow for 1.5 seconds, which is very significant because it allows you to hit your enemies reliably with your spear. And Bulwark can now be toggled on, which puts away your weapon, meaning you can't attack, and causes you to face in the direction you're facing to be locked. You cannot you cannot turn around. Uh, however, your movement speed is 20% slower by in this mode, and 70% of attack projectiles will be redirected towards you instead of your allies. So essentially, you just become a tank. You just tank everything against... Uh, certain lineups like if they have range heroes you just tank everything it's pretty insane morphling ulti now has the same mana when you're in your actual morph state and turning into someone you used to have different mana pools but now you do not now it is the same and you share them also morph now provides the scepter 50 percent mana cost reduction as a based feature so you know helps with some mana issues nature's profit best hero in the game now very cool night stalker's Scepter got nerfed, it no longer reduces the cooldown, its stun duration was nerfed as well, so overall they just had to nerf the Scepter, and they did. Nyx Assassin got a movement speed increase, very very cool. Puck got a bunch of really interesting changes that I think make the hero extremely good. Waning Rift now has a cast range, meaning you can essentially mini blink with Waning Rift, but it's 350, which is a lot, that's not a small number. So it just lets you move into fights, it's extremely good for ganking early game, it's good for harassing people in the landing stage and securing CS. It just seems like a massive, like a massive, massive, massive buff. Also, Dream Coil now deals an initial 100, 150, 200 damage, and it doesn't seem like that nerfs the break damage, which is also just way, it just seems way too much damage. It's just a ton, considering the break is also like 300. Seems insane to me. I think Puck might be just broken. And so, yeah, I just think Puck is very good. Also, some talent buffs overall is what I'd say. Except you don't, you can't take the six all stats, which is actually fairly decent. Pudge can no longer deny himself, which is what I mentioned earlier. And the Scepter now reduces dismember cooldown to 11, which is a buff, obviously. And it allows you to target an ally with dismember, which swallows them in your belly, which heals them for 4% of their max health per second. And the ally can exit whenever they want by issuing a command. So essentially, you can just eat your teammates to keep them alive, and they heal while in your belly. So you, like, save people. I think there's some League hero that does the same thing. Uh, Dota's copying League, I guess. Let's go. Razor got some really weird changes. Uh, the main one you need to know is that Static Link now causes Razor to continuously attack the Link target. So whoever you Link, you just continuously attack, but you can't attack anyone else. So kind of weird. Not really sure why they did this. I think it's good for the laning stage, but kind of bizarre because considering you can't hit whoever you want. Ricky got all his abilities shifted. Essentially, your old Ricky now, your ultimate is now invisibility. You have two charges of your bling strike. Smoke screen was changed quite a bit, and you got a bunch of overall stat buffs that allow you to lane better considering you are not invisible all of the time. Shadow Fiend's ultimate now has a fear. Silencer is more of a core now. His Claves of Wisdom now steal intelligence for a certain period of time, and that's the most important part to note of Silencer. You still have your permanent int steal because they did not specify that you got rid of it, and then you steal int. Techies Proximity Mines now have three charges with a 15 second replenish time. So pretty big buff to Techies. You have three mines now, which allows you to double mine areas very quickly, which is significant, and kill more creep waves, which is, I don't know, this just seems huge to me. It's, it's essentially means that mines have a five second cooldown, but you can use them whenever you want. It's just really crazy to me. In, in addition, your scepter now also allows you to throw mines by 400 more cast range, which is definitely a big deal. It lets you stay out of the fights and just hit the back lines with massive damage bombs. Pretty, pretty big deal to me. Tiny's tree grab no longer has charges, so you kind of just keep the same tree for a long period of time, but you have 15 less damage. It now causes you to move 25 slower. It does not work on denies, and it does less damage to buildings, so kind of bizarre. I think he's still just a roamer because you got 20 more movement speed, so you move very quickly if you don't take tree grabs. I think people are just going to be playing him solely as a roamer now. Venomancer's poison sting now reduces regeneration by 30%, meaning HP regen is nerfed. Base attack speed 
Viper is now more of a right clicker, which is all you essentially need to understand. I recommend you play Viper as a right clicker. Visage now has an ability that allows you to move your familiars to a certain area and drop them at that certain area, which is convenient. It just makes Visage less of a micro hero. Sakuchi no longer grants haste. It removes the speed limit, but you can't be slowed and it gives you a lot of movement speed. So it's kind of like the same thing. You just can't be slowed. Winter Wyvern can now damage the person they curse, which is pretty significant. So I really like that. And yeah, that's going to be all for this video. I know it's a bit longer than I wanted, but I'm sure most patch videos are going to be two, three, four hours. So hopefully this around 30 minute video was a bit better for you guys and you have a better understanding of the patch. There will be more videos to come throughout this week, a ton, I'm sure. And so, yeah, I hope you're excited as I am. Uh, thanks for watching this video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now, right now, to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys, 25%, and start your journey today.